Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 11 and we have covered all the remaining topics of this chapter and time for us to quickly jump onto some of the sample questions from here and of course get some insights about what exactly are the various types of questions, what can be expected from here and how to answer them. Well, the very first question coming up right in front of you is in which of the following situations would AI be most useful when categorizing new defects? I think this chapter was more about determination of how AI can be used in testing and certainly these are very, very to the point and appropriate enough to tell you how exactly AI could be seen as one of the helpful element to minimize the effort of a tester while testing the system. And this question is all about categorizing a new defect. So there were a few parameters what we discussed and we tried understanding how this could be done. So let's see the options right here. A small number of defects requires categorization of a new application. I think uh, this option is slightly here and there disturbed with what exactly we are looking forward to. So where a small number of defects requires categorization and there's no historical data, AI would not have training data to be used, right? So I certainly need some kind of, you know, past information, some kind of historical data to get some insights about how to go ahead and do that. So genetic algorithm and neural networks can be used for test generation and even be combined clustering produces results applicable to the test generation but doesn't help on what we are looking forward to so when it comes to a large number of defects uh, it's not something what we can really do without any kind of historical data uh, sorry the small number of defects requires categorization which is uh, certainly there is no historical data and i may not be able to do that Talking about the next option, a large number of defects is reported on a small application. Now this is very limited, right? As the name says, we have large number of defects, but on a very small application. And this small application could be a good candidate for us to talk about AI. So where a large number of defects is reported on a small application, there is a most likely to be benefit on opportunity of identifying duplicates, right? Because application is limited and the number of defects are high so we can reduce the ai can do this job by identifying duplicates in the you know reported defects and see how we can reduce it to the unique ones so this looks a little interesting when we talk about how ai can be most useful in categorizing new defects now option c says minimal data is provided in typical defect reports now minimal data is constrained now where minimal data is provided in defect report the usefulness of the tool will be lower as less data will be available to the algorithm, right? So of course that certainly does not make sense because minimal data is limited and I may not be able to make decisions or categorizations using AI without enough information. Well, talking about D, a new development team needs to know the most appropriate developer to fix a defect. Um, for AI to recommend developers to fix defects, it would need to be based on historical data again because what kind of developer portfolio we have and what kind of defects a developer has fixed in past and who has what kind of expertise, right? So at the end of the day, all we want to tell you is that AI needs information. The AI needs to be trained and then AI can make decisions. The AI doesn't do anything on its own. Given that if I have any kind of information available, right, which displays or dis just, just kind of like puts across that who is more relevant for what, I can make this decision, right? However, because a new development team is taking over, any recommendation would be inaccurate until unless historical data is available. Because in option D says, a new development team needs to know. That means for this team, we don't have any kind of data available. So in that context, if we just summarize things together, the right answer here is, B, a large number of defect is reported on a small application. Given that there are a lot of defects here and the application is limited, I can certainly go ahead and use this benefit to identify the duplicates. Moving on to the next one, of course, the second question we have is which of the following options correctly states how an AI based tool can perform optimization of regression test suite. Now that again comes from very straightforward topic where we discuss about the regression testing 
and reducing the effort on that. So right here we have very straightforward options. Option A says by analyzing false positive test results. Now false positive is an interesting thing. The goal of regression testing optimization is to reduce the size of it, or prioritizing or augmenting a test suite, not to reduce the false positive. That's more of like a individual's review. The person has to go through because sometimes I do uh, perform things which might not be appropriate enough and I want to guess or probably like review the executions and find out how many false positive are there in that. But uh, certainly AI is not what we are looking as a scope to support on regression testing from the perspective of identifying false positive or false negative. We are mainly in this section uh, looking forward to say that AI should help us to reduce the size, prioritize the tests and augment the test suite over a period of time, right? That's the major challenge is what we see from a regression test suite, not this one. So AI is not something what we can use it for. Talking about option B, by analyzing information prof from previous testing activities, I think that looks uh, pretty much okay because from the previous testing activities, we get to know a lot of insights about what has been performed in the past. So optimization of regression test suite can be done uh, by analyzing the information on the past executions, what you have performed. So that would help the AI to learn and based on that recommend that what test cases have been helpful in past to you know, do better testing. So it looks sound, but let's be sure about C and D. C says by using generic, genetic algorithm to create new test cases. I think we just spoke about the genetic algorithms uh, in the last segment too. So in our syllabus, we have already covered that regression test optimization is typically performed using previous test execution data. A genetic algorithm to create new tests is unlikely to achieve the goals of optimizing the regression test suite, right? So the major intention of optimizing a test suite is, of course, to, you know, augment this, the, take care of the size and prioritization, not something about, um, you know, working on creating a new test and that too with genetic algorithm, right? Genetic is more of like generic and this doesn't work on generic way. It has to be dependent on the previous data. Anyways, looking on the option D by updating the expected results to counter concept drift. Concept drift. It is important to consider regression testing and concept drift together. However, what we have covered as per that concept drift is not related. Okay, concept drift is not related to regression test optimization using AI. So point being made is uh, currently we have to stick or adhere to the content which we have discussed. At this point of time, we have no idea that uh, concept drift and regression testing can be addressed by AI. Currently, AI is only being seen to support regression testing from the perspective of optimizing it in terms of prioritizing size, etc. So that doesn't help at this point of time. There's no comments. There are no information available that how AI can be helpful in combination of regression to that of concept drift. Anyways, so being very straightforward, the right answer here is B, by analyzing information from previous testing activities could be uh, is the right answer because uh, we need to have the past data to let AI system learn about it, that what is the pattern of your executions and what executions have resulted into great identification of defects or what are more important to be performed. So put together, that's all what we had from this particular syllabus. In fact, that's this particular chapter and the syllabus. So this completes our entire ISTQB AI tester, but we'll have one more short tutorial to talk about the closing notes of this session so that we can wrap it up together with tips, tricks, and number of questions chapter wise, and then look forward to the next series of tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.